Hi guys and welcome to your daily tarot reading for Wednesday the 6th of July 2022. Thanks for joining me. I'm going to use three decks today. I'm going to pull one card from each deck. So I'm going to use the Art of Life Tarot, the Crystal Unicorn Tarot, and my tarot deck, the Gregory Scott Tarot. So let's see what the cards have to say about Wednesday and what energy you'll be working with. So I'm not going to bother shuffling these two at all really because I'm just picking one card. So first of all we've got the Moon. Then we've got, let's see. Oop. This card was left in the box, so I'm just going to use that one. We've got the Five of Swords in reverse. Okay, interesting. And then let's see which one wants to be here. We've got the Four of Wands. Okay, so the basic message I'm getting is that if you don't go into fear, and you don't kind of take action on, that's based around fear, particularly, you resist that, you do get to a happy place where you can celebrate with other people, you can enjoy their company, but it's going to take a little bit of work. So it's interesting because I feel that this week relationships are somewhat complicated in general, and this is talking about that again. First of all, the moon in the tarot is a major arcana card, and it refers to this fundamental universal theme that if we're trying something new, a new path that isn't guaranteed, usually most of us are going to be afraid of what can happen. But the moon card is about having faith and saying, I'm going to listen to my intuition here. I want to take this path or I am taking it for a particular reason. Whether I'm full of doubt and fear or not, this is something that feels important. So I'm going to pursue it and see where it takes me. So it does kind of... Um, imply that a little bit of faith is required and trusting in yourself. If you have a desire, if you have a strong need internally to go in a particular direction, to try something new, then that in itself is confirmation that you're supposed to do it. If that desire weren't meaningful or wasn't part of your experience on this planet, then you wouldn't have the desire to begin with. So any fears or doubts that come up, you can see as the lower self working against you and your kind of lack of trust jumping in and saying, oh, be very careful. This is going to turn out badly anyway. Don't even bother. And when you hear that kind of message, you know for a fact that you're triggering your own ego and that you're onto something. Because if it weren't likely to succeed, then the ego wouldn't need to step in and intervene and fill you full of fear. If you were going to fall on your face anyway, it wouldn't bother to sabotage you and to bring up these fearful emotions. The other thing about the moon is that it, it governs your intuition and what comes naturally and easily. So by listening to your feelings, first and foremost, that's the compass that you can use on this day to move forward. And you can kind of rest assured, particularly if there is um, some sort of anxiety coming up, that this is something worth doing. That it's important to push through the fear because the outcome on the other side of it is going to benefit you in some way. So the message here we've got, go confidently in the direction of your dreams, live the life you've imagined, regardless, and I'm adding this, regardless of any, any doubts or fears or stress it may cause you. And in the image, let's see what this is. We've got The Sleeping Gypsy by Henry Rousseau. And we've got this uh, woman sleeping. And a lion is kind of sneaking up to her while she sleeps. So she's not noticing this. So that's the whole thing about the moon. It's this sense that, ooh, something is lurking in the shadows here. I know I'm on the right track or this is something I want to do. But what scares me is all these unseen dangers that I feel are kind of lurking behind every corner. Now, what's interesting is that the lion in the tarot is associated with the eighth card in the major arcana, the strength card. And that's what I'm saying about um, letting fear actually serve as a, as a signpost that this is something that you're meant to look at and if you kind of tap into your inner strength and say, I don't care what's lurking in the shadows, I'll be able to deal with it as and when it appears, then you're able to keep going. And in reality, most of the things that we worry about 
99% of those things don't happen anyway. Next, we've got the Five of Swords. And this has been showing up quite a lot lately. It's in reverse. Um, I just want to turn it upright to, to read the card both ways. So it's been showing up this way in the last couple of days and weeks. And this is about self-will. And I often associate the Five of Swords with serious conflict and even a bullying kind of behavior. So usually it's one person, they've obviously replaced it with unicorns here, but one person holding all the swords and two people really um, mourning something, they're in a state of loss and despair, and it's kind of after the battle. So there's been a sword fight, this is the victor, he's claiming all the swords for himself, he's saying I've won, and they've been defeated. And the whole thing about the Five of Swords is that it's this, this kind of temporary energy or these situations where you come up against someone else who's completely unwilling to compromise. And not just that, they're determined to be aggressive, to get their own way, whether they're right or not, because of it can be a response to fear. So I'm afraid. So rather than being afraid, I'm going to go into anger or resentment because that feels much more comfortable to deal with. And I'm going to put other people down in order to feel better about myself. And that doesn't work because if you're making enemies left, right and center, those things will catch up with you sooner or later. So it's short sighted. If you're doing things that are really underhanded or you're bullying people or you're manipulating them to get what you want, you know it's going to come and bite you in the behind sooner or later. So the, the card, when it's this way around, says try and see other people's point of view, engage with them as an equal, and don't get into this competition because usually what you're angry about or what you think you're angry about isn't really the case. You may be afraid or you may be irritated by something else, and it's just a way of coping, a bad way of coping, basically. It's so the card is in reverse, and the good news is that you're not likely to go into anger mode and distract yourself with feelings which feel more comfortable, which are just as useless as fear, as in anger and bullying people. And what that means is because swords is the element of air, it has to do with your perspective and thinking, you're able to manage your own anxieties. You'll be able to see them for what they are as these illusions these kind of mirages conjured up by your lower self trying to keep you stuck and hold you back. And you have very little, uh, there's very little risk of you going into this, this um, kind of narcissism mode because you're able to deal with whatever emotions appear to you. So whatever you're feeling on this day, whether you feel unsure or whether you feel afraid or whether you feel reluctant or whatever it is, the key thing is to take a step back behind that and to say, what is it that I want to do that's important to me right now that's bringing up these emotions? And when you ask yourself that, you can say, well, okay, I understand. I'm, I'm afraid because the outcome isn't guaranteed. And if I fail, it's going to be embarrassing and I'll have egg on my face. So of course, I understand that. And that understanding, because it's air, perspective and the mind, you'll be able to compartmentalize your own fears, put them in a box somewhere, and say, thank you for sharing, but I'm not going to be governed by this right now. I'm going to keep going because I am strong. And this is an opportunity that is likely to work out because I'm afraid of it. So fight your fear or skip over your fear or sidestep your fear. That's the way to move ahead. And when you're able to do that, you get to the four of ones, which I always say is the happiest card in the deck because it represents a celebration. There's a sense of community, everyone celebrating together. And these two have got to a moment in their lives that really represents hopes and dreams coming true. So, you know, when she was a girl and when he was a little boy, they were like, mm, I wonder if I'm ever gonna find my soulmate and if I'm gonna be happy and settle down and start my own family, that's important to me. That's something that I feel is gonna give me meaning. And they've, they've, um, work towards that and now they get to this moment of celebration the actual wedding and it's like ta-da we've got there so it's a feeling of accomplishment and it's celebrating something really wonderful that's happened in your life and in the life of another person 
and you let everyone else in on the fun. The ones in themselves, they create a doorway. So it's the beginning of a wonderful new future. And it's the four of ones. So four in numerology represents security and structure. So by managing your fear, you're able to connect with people in a way that's, that's unlike, that's different to the way you usually connect to other people because you're more open you feel strong in yourself, you've overcome your own fears, so you don't need to be afraid of anyone else, or you don't need to put on some sort of a facade to present yourself in a way that you think other people may like. You can be yourself, and you can meet other people on the most authentic, real level. You're not hiding anything, you're not altering your behavior, you present yourself as you truly are, and on that basis, you can then meet people at the best place possible. Other people who may want to celebrate with you or who want to get to know you or who may want to start a relationship with you, whatever it may be. So because there's all this work to do, it means that if you go into relationships fearful and you're like, OK, well, I don't feel great, so I'm going to bully everyone else to make myself feel better, then you're not going to get the opportunity to have this door open and to walk through it. But if you do the inner work and you say, okay, these fears are just illusions, I don't have to buy into them, then you do meet people on an equal footing and you're able to, well, it's not about being able to, but I really feel that the work you do here then puts you in a space where the universe delivers something delightful that you couldn't have foreseen or planned for. So if you're someone who is focused on relationships, you want to make changes in that area of your life, if you're single, if you're looking for a relationship, if you're in a family situation, that's difficult. If, you're, if you've got a boss who you don't really get on with, if you, um, I don't know, have colleagues where there's constant conflict, by not going into the fear and then letting the fear govern your behavior. So let's say you're in a board meeting and you feel like no one ever listens to you and they just talk over you. It makes you really angry. You stand up and you, you shout and insult everyone. That's not going to lead to a happy place and it's not going to be a cooperative thing. Instead, you're like, okay, this is a situation where I'm frustrated. No one ever listens to me. I'm not going to react on that level. Instead, I'm going to listen to my intuition and see what that provides in terms of the content we're discussing at this board meeting. You come up with a great idea that everyone then does listen to, and that then creates an, an energy of harmony, and you have something valuable to offer that people really actively will listen to, and it just changes the whole dynamic around. So by creating the positivity in yourself first, it means it spreads onto other people into all of your relationships. If you don't feel like doing the inner work and you tap into the, neg the negativity and share that around, then that's the result you'll get. So it's the cards are being kind of strict here and they're giving you a very specific warning that there's major balance on this day. What you put in, you will get out. So try as much as you can to add something valuable to the world, to your relationships. And it's very, very likely that you'll get something even better as a result. Number wise, we've got the moon. I think that's number 18. Let me just double check. Yeah, the, the moon is the 18th card in the major arcana. So 18 and 4 is 22. And 5 is 27. 4 and 5 is 9. And 18 is 27. Yep. So two and seven then is nine. Nine in numerology is the vibration of spirituality and completion. So by managing your own fears and these difficult emotions, you'll and, and by mastering that today, it'll be easier to repeat that in future so that you're not governed by your lower self, but instead you're working with your higher self. And that's something you can learn on this day and close off that lesson so that your entire future looks much brighter because you're consistently giving out more positive vibes. You know, that's one of the difficulties of this planet. If you're happy, then it's easy. You give out happiness and everything's hunky-dory, well, often. But if you're really struggling and you're ill and you've been rejected and blah, 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 then it's even more work to stay positive. So that's one of the things we all unfortunately have to learn here on planet Earth. So... I hope um, you're able to or you're willing to do the work for yourself because you certainly are able to. I hope you're you're willing to kind of 
um, look at your own perspective and what you're putting into a situation so that you can get this amazing, wonderful outcome. I hope you have a great day. If you'd like a personal reading with me, please get in touch via my website. It's gregoryscott.com. On the front page, click on book your reading to order your reading with me. And if you like this video, then give it a thumbs up. Please hit subscribe and the little bell next to it to be notified of when I go live. And also share the video online. That'd be amazing. Have a great day and I'll speak to you tomorrow.